Wow. Ooh. That's a carrot cake. <gasps> Does it look like a carrot cake? No. no. Do you want to come close yes. and have a look? Yes. Oh, oh, my God. God. So this won Best Dessert in Australia for last year. It looks beautiful, delicate, artful, and I'm not sure that I've ever done something that looks quite so beautiful, so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm worried. So there's a lot of elements and there's a lot of technique. Shall we cut into it and have a look? Yes, please. please. Yeah. Of course. Oh, oh that's amazing. That. So down the bottom there is actually a carrot cake. Then you've got your rice bubble crunch for the texture of it. Then you've got your apricot and carrot insert. Yep. There's a praline creamer and there's a caramel glaze. Then we do our graffiti splash because it represents Melbourne. And I'm a Melbourne girl, so I love that. <laughs> but then you're also tempering chocolate. So you're doing a milk chocolate and an orange chocolate. Then you've got your crumbs with your carrot cake, caramelised walnuts, carrot ribbon, your sorbet as well, and the baby celery. Mm -hmm. okay. And because of carrot cake, we've got the cream cheese icing. But that's not cream cheese icing, obviously. It's a foam. This isn't just a dish. This is artwork. Like, there's no way in this world that I'm ever going to be able to make that. No way. I'm not going to finish this. I really wish that I had pushed myself to get that cream cheese on the plate. You know, I knew it was an important step in the dish. I knew it was a really important element. And I'm really hoping that I haven't made the wrong decision by focusing all my energy on that cake. Obviously, you're missing the tempered chocolate. Yes. I'm also missing the cream cheese as well. Um, I didn't quite get that finished in time. Um, I really wanted to just make sure that I focused on getting every element exactly how I remembered it and how I remember tasting it and feeling it in my mouth. That's good. Well, proof's in the pudding, isn't it, Rose? Yeah, yeah. And proof's in what we cut open and taste. Rose, thank you. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks, Rose. Rose has to have done a great job with all the elements. Because a carrot cake without the icing. Mm. Is it a carrot cake? Let's find out. Oh, that's good. That's very good. Oh, look at that. Look at that. She's done a really good job. That is a very balanced interpretation of your dish. She's, I think the flavours there are really beautiful. They're not really beautiful. The sorbet and the, the cremo, for some reason, just pops, which is interesting. I like that. I really do. Good, good crunch on the crumb as well. Yeah. For me, that what's a standout is that sorbet. It's bright, it's vibrant, yeah. it's fresh. The texture's lovely. I think she took the longest, didn't she, take, making the sorbet? But obviously you can see Well, you can see, look how bright it is. Yeah, it's beautiful. Look, obviously we do need to identify that she has forgotten an element that is important, yeah. um, being that, that cream cheese foam. Please welcome, live from her restaurant core in London, it's Claire Smith. <laughs> Claire Smith pops up on screen. I am pumped. I am a real big fan of Claire Smith. I've watched her on TV. I love seeing her beautiful design of food. It's art on a plate. Morning, Claire. Hi, how are you? Very well, thank you. It's great to be with you today. I'm so excited. What a great way to be a part of the show. It's awesome. It's been a really challenging year for everyone in hospitality across the globe. How are you guys going over at CORE? We're all happy, we're all good, and we're still doing what we love, which is the main thing. Now, we have a few contestants here who are keen to become chefs. Why did you want to become a chef? Uh, quite simply, it's the best profession in the world. Uh. <laughs> I started cooking when I was 16 years old. I worked under some incredible chefs. Um, I learned from the very best, and I love it. Sure, I work very, very hard, but literally, you can come from 
zero to hero in this profession. And now I own my own business and I, I hope that that's possible for everyone in this industry. It was only a few years ago that I, I started cooking and found this passion for it quite quickly. It's definitely cemented that the career as a chef is what I want to do. Righto, Claire, we can see that shiny cloche sitting in front of you. The dish under Claire's cloche. It's a little hint to the mystery box challenge that's going to happen today. Oh, do you want to see it? Yes. Do you want to see it? Yes. Do you want to see it? Yes. OK, Claire, let's put them out of their misery. Uh. <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> so this is my butter poached scampi with wasabi, peas, and rose geranium. Wow. Oh, my God. How good does oh, that wow. look? It's the most exquisite thing I think any of us have ever seen. The detail she's put into this plate of food is just, like, insane. And I'm just a little bit worried about what might be under the mystery box lids. <laughs> OK, you can lift your lids now. Ooh. 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 So pretty. Ooh. Wow. Oh, wow. It's beautiful. If you haven't worked it out yet, the ingredients in your box are the same ingredients in Claire's Michelin star dish. Yeah, so there's scampi, um, there's peas, fresh wasabi, uh, there's brandy, there's lemon, they've got chives, tomato, also rose geranium, which is absolutely delicious if used well, um, but it can be quite overpowering if it's not. The rose geranium, I feel, is risky. My mum has it in her garden, and I know the smell. It's very strong. But I can see the scampi front and centre, and I'm starting to form an idea. Wasabi flowers, the white ones. That, that's wasabi flowers. Fresh wasabi. Oh, my gosh. I haven't cooked with fresh wasabi in so long. It is, you know, it's just such a good ingredient to use, and it's just a really, really good mystery box. I think it's a really exciting box of ingredients to cook with and I'm really looking forward to see what you guys are going to come out with. Now here are the rules. You need to use at least one of the ingredients in the box and the pantry staples under your bench to bring us a delicious dish. You will have 75 minutes to cook and we will be tasting all of your dishes. But only the top five dishes today will move on to the immunity challenge where they will battle it out for immunity from Sunday's elimination. OK, contestants, good luck. Your 75 minutes starts now. I really like these ingredients in this mystery box. I think Claire's done great. I'm a big fan of Claire's. Hopefully I can put together a nice dish though. The mystery box is so pretty. As soon as I opened it, it was obvious that a very sophisticated lady had put it together. Flowers, the peas, it's just, there's so many things to draw inspiration from. I hope I can put something pretty on a plate. I'm putting together a scampi tortellini with a scampi bisque. I've decided to make a caramelised onion brandy ice cream. I'm feeling comfortable. Today I'm making lasagna. Would love a top five dish today. It means that I can have a cook for immunity and uh, potentially sit out the uh, elimination for once. Priya, I love your dish. I think it's fantastic. And the ingredients that you've picked in the box here are fantastic. Yeah, I think for me, I reckon I love it how it's like really humble ingredients on one end and then a couple of really high end ingredients, i.e. wasabi and scampi. Yeah, so judges, you all know what I've done with those ingredients. I'd love to know uh, what you would cook with those. I'd, I'd go all in on a smoked tomato broth, use the scampi thrown straight over the coals, and then use the heads to, for a sauce just to coat over the, over the scampi. I think that's key when you have such a beautiful luxury ingredient, is you want to use every part of it. Well, Claire, I would actually maybe put the scampi to the side, and I was thinking tomato tart. I think that's great. Well, I love scampi. I would blanch it and then I would make a, basically a play on a tartare. 
Use the heads and the bodies to make cocktail sauce with your brandy or your aromats. Delicious. Maybe you can come over and cook that one for me, John. <laughs> I'm going to do a seared scampi with the tomato tartare. I think that was the first thing that came to mind. I think they'll pair well. I've got a fish fumet underway. A fumet is essentially a quick stock that you reduce to the point that it's a sauce, really full of flavour. I'm also going to do a chive oil, an onion puree. All the elements will taste well together. The cook on this scampi being perfect is absolutely crucial. In the last team challenge, I was responsible for cooking the chicken. Chicken was overcooked, just plain and simple. I overcooked it and our team ended up in the elimination. My biggest goal with cooking is that I'm not content to be a home cook. I really want to be a chef. I feel like this is a real privilege to be able to cook something that Claire's involved in. So I'm determined to prove to the judges that I do know how to cook protein and I can do this perfectly. We'll see what happens. Oh, baby! He's on fire. The moment of... So the mystery box today I'm pretty excited with. The box itself lends us more to a savoury side. I'm going to do a dessert for the first time. So who knows how it's going to turn out. I don't want to make just another scampi sauce pasta where I think everyone else might be going today. I really want to stand out. I'm going to make a gururaki, which is a Greek uh, lemon biscuit. I'm going to have it with an ice cream sandwich. So it's going to be like a Greek take on an ice cream sandwich. The kururaki is a Greek biscuit that we make at Easter, usually with orange zest, but I'm using lemon today. I'm going to have an olive oil ice cream in the middle. I currently am whisking my egg and uh, sugar together. I've got my cream seeping with the milk, and I've got some of the rose geranium leaves in there seeping. I've never used rose geranium leaves, and I just kind of want to see how this works. Hello. How are you? <laughs> Lovely to see you again. You too. Um, when it comes down to it, you've, um, you've got some pretty mad kitchen skills. You've been cooking for how long? Oh, gosh. 38 years. Wow. 38 years. So there's knowledge, there's palate, and there's technique in those fingers there. So I suppose you want to know what you're going to do today? Yes. yes. <laughs> Probably good. Today consists of two rounds, two elimination rounds. The first round is about keeping up with Kylie. <laughs> Kylie's going to cook a signature dish and you have to match it. Oh my god. This first round is all about speed. There is no clock on this one. Kylie sets the pace. Quick pace. When she finishes, you must too, regardless at what point you're at. Whew. Today's challenge is very different. I don't think I've seen anything like it. Kylie's going to be cooking her dish in front of us, and we have to match everything she does at our own bench and put up a dish that is exactly like Kylie's in the same time that she cooks it. Out of this round, two safe, three are not. They'll go into the second and final round. So the key here is keep up with the professional. Oh, jeez. Audra? I'm just shaking right now. I mean, I'm your biggest fan, oh. honestly. I just love what you represent. The fact that you've just gone back to your roots, but you've put your flair on it as well. And you know what? Today, it's a dream come true for me. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank I can't you. wait to see what you cook as well. Oh. <laughs> the pressure's I'm looking on. forward to your cooking. <laughs> Bo, I'm just watching your Adam's apple, <laughs> and you're swallowing dryly <laughs> in your throat there. Are you worried? No, I'm not scared at all. Food's not scary. Kylie's a little bit scary. <laughs> oh, thanks, so. Not, not you, just the, the speed that you cook at, so that's yeah. what I'm worried about. Mindy. <laughs> Mindy's are, jealous you, now. You a... I was trying to be really positive, say, oh, no, you know, it's, it's a good decision to make, but honestly, I've missed out on cooking with someone that is an absolute inspiration, and I'm actually quite upset about it. Why don't you come down it. and give her a cuddle? Oh! <laughs> come on. Well, that's not fair. Where's Water my cuddle? Come on. Oh. Give her a... We can all cuddle. Oh, come on. <laughs> hey. Come on. Line up, oh, cuddles. Hang on. So Stay 
pleased to meet you. I you am so excited. Nice to meet you. We'll have to Do. cook again another oh, time. Oh, can we? Okay, yeah. <laughs> I'll have to cook for you and I today. <laughs> you will be. You will be, thank you. Better now? Yeah, much better. <laughs> okay, right. Off you go. Back up there. <laughs> right, it's all about keeping up with Kylie. So that also means you will not be seeing a dish at the beginning. Uh-oh. That's not nice. Kylie? Today we're cooking steamed blue swimmer crab with black beans and chilli. OK? Yum. That's incredible. Kylie, how fast are you? 20 minutes. Sounds simple. Yeah. <laughs> In a nutshell. <laughs> this is my worst MasterChef nightmare. It's Kylie Kwong, it's Chinese, and I am in deep, deep trouble. Kylie, your little cooking troops are ready to go. Yes. In your own time, show us how it's done. Go. So what we've got to do first is get our steamer on, stove up high, because we want the water to be boiling. Otherwise, you'll end up casseroling your crab. Kylie starts, and the first thing I realise is, don't look, listen. She's got a big TV screen above her, but as soon as I lift my eyes to look at that, I'll get lost with what's happening in my bench. So I'm going to keep my eyes down and just listen to what she's saying. And then we're going to cut each half into another half. So you've got four pieces of crab. I've cooked Chinese food before, but I've never cooked crab, so it's, it's very new to me. So hopefully I'll get it right. Is everyone keeping up? Andy, I saw you take a big deep breath then. There's two parts to this recipe. We're steaming and the other part is creating a stir fry. So let's peel a little bit of ginger. It's all going so fast now. That puts extra pressure on me and I know one mistake and I'm playing catch up and that's not a good position to be in. So half a red onion. Just half, was it, Kylie? Half a red onion, yep, finely sliced. Well, I'm pretty confident. I'm keeping up with Kylie, basically knife stroke for knife stroke. I'm backing myself on this one. And the next goal for me is finals week. Julia, how are you? Good. You sure? Yes. Good. A little bit worried about Ben. He's only just sort of keeping up with Kylie. OK, let's trim these four shallots. Just trim the end off. I've fallen behind, so I need to cut a few corners to try and catch back up to where she is. OK, guys, so we're halfway through. Get your second wok out and let's start the stir-fry. And when we start the stir-fry, we're going to put the crab in the boiling steamer. All of the crab? All of the crab. Ben, how are you going? You're falling behind or are you keeping up? I'm going OK. OK, good. What about you, Audra? You'd be right at home with this, wouldn't oh, you? Oh, yeah. You're too fast for me. Oh, I don't, I don't believe it. I think the pressure's on me today. But this is your style of cooking. You should I be know, able to do this with your eyes closed. The pressure's on. <laughs> the expectation from everyone will be that Audra does it today. She nails it today. And I can see the finish line and I'm so determined to get through all these eliminations and just get to finals week. Remember, at the end of the dish, we're going to be looking for the, for the balance of flavour. In particular, I don't want these, these crabs to be too salty, because the salted black beans are extremely salty. How you travelling, Benny? Hey, good, mate. Stirring constantly. We don't want the salted black beans to catch, because they'll be bitter, so they have to be stirred constantly. Not knowing what her flavours taste like, I am hoping the sauce and the balance of the sauce is right. Make sure you're tasting your dishes so you know what you're dealing with here. Half a teaspoon of sesame oil. The important thing is going to be balancing the sauce out because that's where our taste buds and our palate come into play. She can't tell us what it's meant to taste like, we've got to taste for ourselves. OK, you should have a beautiful thickish sauce there. And what you've got is this beautiful vibrant green of the shallots, bright red of the red capsicum. Crabs in, make sure they're drained straight in the wok like that. Let's give it a really good toss without spilling it. Let's put our blistered chilies in right now. OK, now let's plate it up. Let's keep the lids for the top, all right? So place 
each of the legs just so. Beautiful big pile, but not too high so it doesn't fall. Now, pour the sauce over the top. Use one of the lids as a sort of shovel, if you like, a spoon like that. And pour all that beautiful sauce right over the top. As soon as I'm done, which is in 10 seconds, you guys need to be done. OK, so let's put the, the lids on top. Right, that's it. Final five seconds. Kylie's nearly done. Three, two, one. And that's there we it. have it. I'm Chris Manfield, I'm the owner and executive chef of Universal here at Darlinghurst. My philosophy has always been based around the pursuit of excellence. I'm not interested in doing anything that's ordinary, it's always about striving for the extraordinary and perfection. I'm jumping out of my skin to be cooking one of Christine's dishes today. It's a dream come true, I love Christine's cooking. Hi there. Christine Manfield's food is a little bit spicy, it's got some flavours in it. Fingers crossed, this is a spicy dish. Christine, welcome to the MasterChef Kitchen. Thank you. It's an absolute pleasure to have you here. Are you ready to show us what's under that cloche? You betcha. Okay, the dish that you're cooking today... Spice roasted squab with a steamed turnip cake and star anise broth. I just think this is going to be hard. It's not a dish I want to cook. Christine, can you explain to these guys exactly what squab is? Squab is a baby pigeon that has never taken flight and the birds are fed so they become very plump and fat and you get a, a gorgeous sort of softness in the, in the texture. Can you explain to us what exactly is on the plate? OK, if we start from the... Uh, the, the ground up, we've got the star anise broth. Yep. Um, then we've got the turnip cake, which is twice cooked, it's steamed. Then it's um, cut into portions and, and fried gently. Then we've got a little hidden, hidden surprise here, which is the squab leg has been made into a, a patty and encased in um, cabbage leaf and steamed. And then we've got the squab breast, which has been twice cooked. And then we've got a squab liver on the top, which is done in a tempura. Right, guys, come forward and have a good look at this dish. This dish is a two-hat dish. There's no doubt about it. There's so much detail in there. That's really a signature of my work, is really specific, be being very pedantic about detail and execution and getting it just perfect. Obviously, a lot can go wrong with this dish, but what are the three main pressure points? OK, firstly, the squab is just getting the timing really exact and following your recipe because the, the times I've given are, we've test driven these, this a hundred times and it has to be down to the last second. And if you do overcook it, basically take your shoe off and eat it because it's going to taste leathery and dry. The um, turnip cake, getting that consistency, that textural sort of contrast happening within the cake and then the broth. It's really fine tuning, the balance. Slightly too much of one thing can throw the whole thing out of whack. Jonathan, yeah. do you want to taste? As I'm tasting the dish, I'm really just sort of trying to separate the flavours so I can taste what the turnip cake's like, what the cabbage dumpling like, what the squab on top's like, the tempura liver, so that mine tastes the same. Well, the breast is certainly almost liver texture that's very soft, just melts in your mouth. First thing I taste is the broth. I've made a few broths in my time. First flavours I'm getting are sort of sweet, star anise, um, real master stock kind of flavours. Overall, I love this dish. It's so my type of food. Full of flavour, lots of Asian flavours, a lot of spices. I would rather make this dish any time of the week than any cake pastry, anything else that's been put up in this competition. This is definitely a dish I want to do well at. Right, you've had the opportunity to taste the dish. Now you need a roadmap, something to guide you. And can I just let everyone know that we've never had a recipe in a pressure test where it's so long. The whole first page of the recipe card is just a list of ingredients. 
That is huge. But on top of that, I think what you need to know is that you only get one squab. You overcook that squab, goodbye, Charlie. Christine, any final words of advice for our competitors? Don't panic. Work methodically. Nothing good comes out of chaos. So there's one more crucial little bit of information that you need to know. How long you've got to cook this dish. Two hours and 10 minutes. Um, OK, yes. Jonathan, just go back to the squab. Yes. And the recipe. Yes. And after you take the leg and thigh, thigh meat off. Yep. Have I read the recipe? I'm thinking, I think so. What have I done? I want you to uh, refer back to what was said. Cut this here, cut the leg. Yeah, cut the leg. Set aside. Oh, shit. I was meant to leave the breast on the crown. And I've read the carving in the wrong section. You're supposed to deep fry the squab yeah. whole as he's taken the breasts off. If you think about it, you've got the breasts and the bone. The bone would protect it on the underside. So if I chucked it in a deep fryer, I'd just cook through. Anxiety just sets in and I feel like... I, I feel like I've just got to walk out. <laughs> Am I worried? Worried is an understatement. <laughs> That's a real shame. With 15 minutes to go, we can only imagine how you're feeling inside. Don't give up. I've got to steam this dumpling for five minutes, so I'm going to get that on. No, I don't think it matters if it's ready a little bit early. Got to deep fry the squab and cut the breasts off. And I've still yet to do the tempura for the livers. I have to deep fry the whole squab with the breast on. The recipe calls for five minutes, but I only keep it in for four and a half minutes, just to make sure I don't overcook it. I decide to put the squab breast side down into the deep fryer. It's supposed to keep a lot of the moisture in the breast. It's time to cut the turnip cake. Um, and I know it's supposed to be five centimetres by five centimetres, but I don't need a ruler. I'm just going to cut it free form. I should be fine. I've got, she's got plenty of time. Five minutes to go, but I calm down. I still have a chance to stay in the competition. I get the liver coated in the tempura batter, get it in the fryer, finish up the turnip cake, get it out, let it rest. I've got the steamed cabbage bun out. With all the other elements now ready to go, I've got my squab breasts just sitting there resting because I'm going to cook those in the last minute so I can get them on the plate cooked perfectly. Your focus on this dish now is paramount, and the pain you're feeling is universal. I decide to get the squab out two minutes early. To me, it looks cooked enough. The liver's got to go in, into the deep fryer for about a minute. I test my star anise broth pour seasoning. I decide to strain it off and get it into the serving jug. So to fix my error, I heat a pan up really hot, add a little oil, put the squab breast in skin side down, and then just spoon the oil over the top so it cooks the meat on the underside. If he can get the same result as the deep frying that Jimmy and Courtney have done, he may be OK. I dip the livers into the tempura batter, lift it up, and there's just no batter left on this liver. Hopefully, in the cooking process, it will start coating the liver while it's in there. I'm looking down at the liver, and it's just liver. I don't even look at it. I don't have enough time to even think about what I've got to do. Start plating the cake. Yeah, yeah, I am. I'm on. It's time for the pigeons to come home to roost. 30 seconds to go. Come on! I think it's cooked really well. 
That skin is mega crispy. I'm pretty confident that I've made up on my error. 10 seconds to go. I could clean down now. Five, four, three, two, one. That's it. Well done. Well done. Great.